Hello friends and YouTube family, welcome back to my garden. <laughs> I'm here today to share with you a little bit about soil and what makes good soil and what helps keep soil alive. And so before that, just a little bit of history. Um, before World War I, our federal government had a very limited role in fertilizer research. Um, but 1916 was a turning point. Lawmakers included in the National Defense Act a provision to manufacture fertilizer during peacetime and then obviously chemicals during war, war times, but they wanted uh, to give the manufacturers a continuous task, and so they began having them create artificial fertilizers. And that fertilizer change soil composition by killing life in the soil. So the plants were still growing because they were being fed, but they no longer had the microbiology supporting them in the soil once the chemicals started being used. Now, what could go wrong with that? Well, there was a really, really, really severe drought. It started in 1931. Um, it, it hit the Midwest and um, the South Central Plains and um, crops started to die. And by 1934, the end of the year, there was a yearbook of agriculture and they announced that approximately 35 million acres of formerly cultivatable land had been destroyed. And about 100 million acres, which still had crops growing on it, had lost all or most of the topsoil. Jumping forward a little bit to April 27, 1935, Congress declared soil erosion a national menace, and they established the Soil Conservation Service, known as the SCS, and they're still in existence today. And through the SCS, they developed new farming techniques, um, things like terracing crops and ro rotating crops and using cover crops and putting... Um, untilled areas um, in between fields to break up the continuous from horizon to horizon plowing that was being done and they were actually paying farmers at that point to begin practicing soil conservation techniques so by december uh, of 1935 just a couple months later um from april to december they estimated a reported loss of 850 million tons yeah that's tons of topsoil completely gone from from the drought and the wind and what was known then as the dust bowl and by 1938 um even though at the end of the year they were um was still in trouble um they had reduced the loss of topsoil by 65 percent using the things that the SCS had um, encouraged farmers to do, but there was still the drought going on. Finally, in um, the autumn of 1939, the rain comes, and, and but then also World War II is, is happening, and of course that puts the chemical companies and everything else into production for, us, for the war, and it ends the, uh, it ends the Depression, um, but it doesn't, it doesn't change the creation of artificial fertilizers um, going forward, even after World War II. So a lot has happened to our soil to kill it. Now my question for those of you listening to me today, what, what do you think dead soil grows? Are the, are the foods that are being grown in dead soil actually having the nutrition to fully support life to fully support farm animals to fully support humans another thing to be pondering on is how long does it take to make an inch of topsoil that was tons of topsoil that were disappeared gone blew off in the dust storm because of inappropriate conservation and appreciation of the life in the soil it takes approximately a hundred years in, in a more tropical area to grow an inch of topsoil. It takes longer than that to grow an inch of topsoil in other areas. Now, those of us who are doing um, raised beds or grow bags and stuff like that, y'all probably notice when you fill those up in the spring and you put all your plants in and stuff, 
somewhere in the middle of summer, if you're, you know, harvesting out one crop and putting something else in, you've noticed the level of the soil has dropped. And by the end of the season, it's really gone down. And the next spring, you're having to fill it up again if you haven't done so in the summer. And if you're making compost, that's great because you're replacing it. Otherwise, you're probably going out and buying some sort of soil. <laughs> well, where does it go? Well, partially, it's, it's being decomposed by the microbial life in the soil and the plants are eating it and then you are eating the vegetables and fruits off your plants and that's where it's going so what do we do to make healthy topsoil what do we do to create gardens that have living soil in them well the first thing will be don't use artificial chemicals because they kill the microbial life in the soil next use the cover crops use crop rotation use mulch do what you can to not till up everything. Um, let the soil be covered by something, even if it's weeds. I know you all have seen in my garden the amount of weeds <laughs> that I let go. And then I, I pull them out. They get put into the compost pile, and they're fine. Or I chop them up with a mower and then put them back on the garden as mulch. So it, it, feeds, this, it feeds the nutrition back into the soil. So thanks for joining me out here while I'm harvesting my potatoes and talking to you about the importance of living soil and how the changes that have happened in commercial and industrial agriculture have changed the foods that we're eating. And the foods that we're eating are not living foods like they once were if they're being grown with chemicals. So please, those of you who have said this on your channels, if you, if you grow it, you know it. And that is really, really true. We have to take control back of our food sources. And if everybody is doing a little garden in their yard and has extra to share with their neighbors, then we're all doing our part to get better nutrition into our families and also practicing good soil conservation techniques in our own gardens by doing things organically and not using chemicals and using the things that will encourage the microbial life. So I've recently come across a really great book and a really awesome um, person. They have a YouTube channel. Um, that's Nigel Palmer and his book is called The Regenerative Grower's Guide to Garden Amendments. If you can get a copy of it, I know some of y'all are already making your own amendments, you know, fermenting things and collecting weeds and stuff and putting them in buckets of water and, or you've seen me on my channel making the uh, compost tea, collecting microbes and putting microbial life back into the garden. This is a, it's not a very big book as you can see, but it's a great little book and I would recommend it. Thank you again for being out here with me while I'm harvesting the Red Norland potatoes. And I'll let you know um, in the comments below the video uh, how many pounds we got out of this spot. So see you all in the next video.